Okay, we're starting to talk about neural learning now. So today's lecture is about neural learning, and the goal is to formulate the problem of supervised learning as an optimization problem. But we'll, while we're talking about learning, we might as well talk about other parts of learning. And by the way, I've got this glove thing on so that when I write on the my iPad, it doesn't it does the palm rejection properly. It's iPad's pretty good, but it's not perfect. So this will save the weird things from happening. So <clears throat> getting a neural network to do what you want usually means finding a set of connection weights that yield the desired behavior. That is, neural learning is all about adjusting connection weights and biases. So there are three basic categories of learning problems, which I'll, I'll review uh, really quickly. Supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. So first of all, in unsupervised learning, sorry, in supervised learning, the desired output is known. So we compute the error and use that error to adjust our network. We have our output and we look at what our desired output was and we take the error and use that to, to tweak our neural network. So for example, given an input image of a digit, for example, and you'll see this, this data set come up again, it's the MNIST data set identify which digit it is. So in this case, we have the input here, and then we have the target over here. So this is a one hot target, and it's 10, since there are 10 digits, there are 10 different classes or 10 different categories. This is a zero category, one, two, three, all the way up to eight and nine. And so you can see this one is, uh, the target for this image is four. Okay, that's supervised learning. Uh, you have a target. Okay, and you use the error to learn. In unsupervised learning, the output is not known or not supplied, so it cannot be used to generate an error signal. Instead, this form of learning is all about finding efficient representations for the statistical structure in our input. So it's often about um, sort of uh, clustering or finding different um, efficient ways of categorizing or efficient ways of representing your input. So for example, given the spoken English words, transform them into a more efficient representation, such as phonemes and syllables. And each different language has um, different sounds that they use. I mean, there are lots of sounds that languages use in common, but different languages have um, different frequencies of those sounds, let's say. And someone who kind of grows up learning a particular language, their auditory system, the part of the brain that processes sound, will become efficient at sort of parsing what they hear into uh, little pieces that uh, allow the brain to efficiently um, interpret what's being said. Or as another example, how about just clustering points into categories? So let's say we had a data set that looks like this, a bunch of points like that. Now you would probably, if I, if I said classify those, or find uh, different categories or find efficient ways of representing or describing that data, you might say, well, let's call this category A, let's call this category B. Don't need ink to shape, okay. So that's unsupervised learning. And we'll talk a little bit about unsupervised learning as well in this course. Finally, reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, feedback is given, but usually less often in the error signal is usually less specific. In fact, it's really just about giving rewards for different outcomes. And so the, the idea is to, um, the agent chooses actions to try to maximize its reward, but often the reward, um, the reward signal can be quite sparse and not specific to uh, error. So for example, when playing a game of chess, a person knows their play was good if they win the game. They can try to learn from that game, think about the different moves that they went through, and I just finished watching The Queen's Gambit, great series. Um, <clears throat> but there's no specific uh, error signal in the sense of no, no specific evaluation of each move as they went through the game. In this course, we're mostly going to focus on supervised learning, but we'll also look at some examples of unsupervised learning. Supervised learning. Our neural network performs some mapping from an input space to an output space. So I've got a picture of a neural network on the right here, and we have inputs over here. Uh, and I'll say it's x1, x2, and they're taken from r2, let's say. And then we have output. 
over here on the right, I'll call it y, well y1 I guess, and I'll just say it's a real number. And then in addition to that we have a target, t. So that's the basic anatomy of a neural network, input and output. So we're given a train, we're given training data with many, often many, many examples of the input output pairs. So this data in the data set is presumably the result of some consistent mapping process. So you, given some input, it consistently creates an approximation of some output. There's some underlying reality that's, um, that's embedded in the data set. So for example, handwritten digits map to numbers. And so if I write a handwritten digit, there's a pretty good chance you'll be able to identify the class of that digit. A very simple example of um, a classification data set is uh, this XOR data set. So on the left, I have different inputs. So input uh, column A and B can be used as two different inputs to a data set. So, so my inputs are two uh, bits of two, um, are strings of two bits. The output in this example is the XOR, so it's the exclusive OR. If, you, if the inputs are the same, you have a zero as output. If they're different, you have a one as output. So the output is Y. It's an element of zero, one. And the target is either zero or one. <clears throat> So our task is to alter the connection weights in our network so that our network mimics this mapping. Given the input 0, 1, for example, we want it to output a 1. So our goal is to bring the output of our neural network as close as possible to the target. But what exactly do we mean by close? So for now, we'll use the scalar function L of y, t as an error or a loss or a cost function, which returns a smaller value as our outputs are closer to the target. So it takes as input, the output of our network and the target and evaluates how close they are. And the further apart they were, the bigger the number. So essentially we want to minimize that loss or cost. Joke break. Here's a joke. Do you know the last thing my grandfather said to me before he kicked the bucket? Hey, grandson, watch how far I can kick this bucket. <laughs> Two common types of mappings encountered in supervised learning are regression and classification. Bas Two basic types of data sets. Regression. In regression, the output values are continuous valued functions of the inputs. The outputs can take on a range of values. So it's really like acting like a continuous valued function. The network is acting like a continuous valued function. So in this case, our output and the target for that matter are both real numbers. And you can see here in this data set, we have a whole bunch of inputs on a spectrum and our outputs are also on a spectrum. So output, outputs fall in a range of values. And so the goal of the neural network is given an input, we want to come up with some estimated reasonable value that is a good approximation of what the data set would have. So in this case, we want something like a, a regression line. <clears throat> but it's, it, because it's regression, um, the, the nature of regression is that it's continuous domain input, continuous domain output as opposed to a classification data set or a classification problem. In this case, the outputs fall into a number of distinct categories. So for example, this MNIST data set, <clears throat> I'm not sure what MNIST stands for. Oh, you can Google it. Um, it has different, it has a whole bunch of uh, input images, but the output falls into distinct classes. So for example, this first one, is a seven, so um, the output is a one-hot vector. Um, I'll be more, you know, we, I've talked about one-hot, have I? 
No, don't think I have. Yes, I have. <clears throat> so the input is a seven and the output is a one hot vector with a one in the seven position and zeros everywhere else. And you can see this is a zero because um, there's a zero in the one hot zero position and so on. So the inputs are whatever, but the outputs are, are discrete classes. A, an example of um, of this kind of data set is CIFAR 10. And there's also CIFAR 100, and there are many different image-based data sets. In this case, you have a whole bunch of images. And in CIFAR 10, at least, there are 10 different classes. So these images fall into 10 different classes. And you can see in this the top row is all airplanes. The next row is all cars or automobiles and birds and cats. The image is input into the network, neural network. The output is a 10 vector where there should be only a single one. Well, ideally, there's a single one. The target is a single one in the 10 vector, a one hot vector. Okay, so that's classification. Regression, the output is continuous in nature. In uh, classification, the output is discrete in nature, categories. Okay. So optimization. Once we have a cost function, our neural network learning problem can be formulated as an optimization problem. A lot of neural networks, a lot of neural network um, programming and design and uh, magic comes down to optimization. So let our network be represented by the mapping F so that Y equals F of X given theta. So in this case, theta represents all the weights and biases in our network. X is the input, and Y is the output. So in this drawing on the right, we have X mapping to Y through F of X, given weights and biases, theta. Let me draw that a bit better. So it's just the input to output mapping, the entire neural network. In that context, um, neural learning seeks to minimize, with respect to connection weights and biases, the expected value of the loss between f of x, or the output of the network, and the corresponding target over the data set minimize the expected loss between the network output and its target over the data set. In other words, find the weights and biases that minimize the expected cost or loss or error between the outputs and the targets. 